Thank you for joining us for the Power of Faith with David Hathaway. It is our hope that you will be inspired and encouraged by this message. We pray God's blessing upon you as you listen today. Don't forget to visit our website, eurovision.org.uk, for more information on David's ministry. In this episode, David continues teaching from the Book of Acts, Chapter 5. In verses 12 to 20, we witness the extraordinary power and presence of God working through the apostles. The passage begins with the apostles performing many signs and wonders among the people, gaining them great favor with the crowds. Despite the growing opposition from the religious leaders, the believers gathered in Solomon's colonnade. But no one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Yet more and more people believed, and were brought to the Lord. Many were healed, simply by being in their presence. The impact of these miracles was so significant, that people brought their sick, out into the streets. Hoping that Peter's shadow might fall on them, and bring healing. Multitudes of people, from neighboring cities, also gathered in Jerusalem, bringing the sick, and those tormented by unclean spirits. Astonishingly, everyone was healed. Now, open your Bible to the book of Acts and join David for today's word. And I think this is the issue here, not just the money. I think the whole issue is our relationship with God and the fact that we should not make promises to God that we don't intend to keep or cannot keep. I mean, yes, we're all human, uh, 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 but we should not, we should not deceive ourselves and God. And I want to just remind you, if you don't keep your promises with God, why do you expect God to keep every promise with you? And I think that's the challenge and the issue. So the Bible is very clear because Sapphira conspired with her husband, she fell down, she died, and was buried. Now we come on to a totally different side. That was really the difficult part. All I can say is that this did create a great deal of fear, so that when you come to verse 12, the disciples performed many miraculous signs and wonders, And yet, all the believers used to meet together at part of the temple known as Solomon's Porch. And at this point, there was a level of fear. And this is the difficulty. This that had happened with Ananias and Sapphira had put uh, some level of fear into the way we deal with God. And it says in verse 13, people were afraid to join them, although they were highly regarded. And yet, by verse 14, it's almost contradictory because it says, nevertheless, more men and more women believed on the Lord and were added to the number. To me, it's quite clear at this stage that there is a division between those who are living together in common and those who were merely outside were accepting and being believers. There is a clear difference here, and it's highlighted. There was a group of them meeting in Solomon's temple and spending their time there, and then you have the other new converts who are coming in who are not joining that smaller group. So, the miracles, I, 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 I'm amazed because here you get such a statement in uh, verse 15, as a result of what was happening, people brought sick people into the streets, laid them on beds or mats, so that even Peter's shadow might fall on them as he passed by. And crowds came from all the surrounding towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits. And in 
the end of verse 16, it says very positively, all of them were healed. It's the only time when I quite clearly see that. Well, it's just a couple of times when I see all of them were healed. It did happen with Jesus, but it also happened with Jesus where in his own town, Nazareth, because of unbelief, people weren't healed. But here, the fear of God was such uh, because of the miracles that they were healed. Now, the result happened in verse 17. The high priest and his associates, who were members of the Sadducees, and remember that the Jews were divided between Pharisees and Sadducees, they were very jealous. <laughs> I like the way this version puts it. They were jealous. They didn't like the fact that um, they didn't have the respect of the people, found it very difficult to get the numbers, but here, these uneducated disciples of Jesus were drawing the crowds and seeing the miracles. So the religious leaders were jealous, and they arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple court, and tell the people the full message of this new life. So the angels were obviously visible. These are not spirits. And it says very clearly, an angel of the Lord actually opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. But when we look later on, you'll find out when the captains of the temple and the guards went to check, the doors were still locked. I'm always intrigued by this because when I was in that prison in Czechoslovakia in 1972, 50 years ago, just over 50 years ago, the amazing thing was that while I was praying, I really challenged the Lord. And I literally said, to him, I didn't have a Bible in there, my, all the Bibles were confiscated, or eight, ten thousand of them. And um, I was really challenged because I said to the Lord, look, two thousand years ago, when Peter and John were put in prison, when Paul and Silas were put in prison, on both occasions, you opened the doors and got them out. In this case, you took them invisibly through the doors. Uh, with Paul and Silas, you broke the chains. So I said, Lord, if you could do that 2,000 years ago, you can do more today because I challenged God and I said, look, I believe that you, Lord, are 2,000 times more powerful than you were in the days of the Bible. That's 2,000 years ago. Your power doesn't diminish or lessen. This is a challenge to the church. God's power does not diminish or lessen. Unfortunately, the attitude of the church is that it does. And so many say you can't expect the same miracles to happen today as happened in the days of the Bible. It was different. It isn't the same today. No, it isn't the same. God's power today is actually stronger than it was in the days of the Bible, and I can prove it because I simply said to the Lord, you have the power, get me out, and you know the story. Yes, all right, I was in the prison for a year, but when the release came, God had revealed to me six months in, well, in fact, more than six months, it's nearly eight months in advance, God showed me the exact day that I would be out. Firstly, 
that I would be speaking in the Royal Albert Hall in London at the Easter Convention, which gave me a date. And secondly, when I challenged him, said, if you can do that, then why can't you get me out for my birthday? I was released on my birthday and I did speak to 10,000 people in the Easter Convention. So, you see, that that was a powerful miracle, not only because God sent the British Prime Minister, and when you look, and we've seen the historic records now that are on public display, that the government did not want me released, and that's why for the Prime Minister to come, <laughs> it was a, a, a much bigger miracle than you realize. But the whole thing is this, People try to say that we can't see these miracles today because God's power is not the same. I'm sorry, God's power is greater today, and I'm in the business of proving it. In a heartfelt display of unity and hope, 2,500 individuals joined together in Ukraine for a day of prayer dedicated to interceding for peace in the region. The event, hosted by David, aim to foster solidarity and to seek divine intervention amid ongoing tensions. All David's life, he has been following a powerful, prophetic vision. Hearing God's voice behind him, saying, this is the way, walk in it. And now, as David explores Paul's letter to the Ephesians in his new book, Power, Your Inheritance, the book of Ephesians explored, David is seeing more clearly what God's ultimate plan is for us, to fulfill. It is by revelation of the Holy Spirit, that step by step, all his life, David has lived the miracles of the Bible. Now, take your Bible, open it to Ephesians, and follow David, through the revelation, he has received, and wants to share with you. Order David Hathaway's book, Power, Your Inheritance, The Book of Ephesians Explored, by visiting, eurovision.org.uk forward slash shop. Thank you for listening to the Power of Faith broadcast with David Hathaway. We would love to hear from you. Contact us by visiting eurovision.org.uk. Also available online are many free teaching resources to help you on your walk with God. David has written many faith-building books to encourage and inspire. Order these online today. Each month, David ministers online and in person. Our ministry is only possible because of the faithful support of so many people. For details on our evangelism and humanitarian relief work, visit eurovision.org.uk. Thank you again for listening.